The next decision rule that we're going to talk about is called the average accounting return, or the AAR. And the average accounting return is slightly different than the other decision rules, specifically because it does away with our operating measure of cash flows, which is the cash flows from assets. Instead, the average accounting return uses an accounting measure of profit, which is net income. So one of the important things that we need to consider when we want when we think about the average accounting return is that we're going to need all of the appropriate accounting information to calculate the problem. But it does remove us from the need of making predictions about the operating cash flows. Now the average accounting return right, is a ratio, and the ratio is the average net income for the projects divided by the average book value of the project's assets. And it's important that both of these are at the project level. In other words, if this is a project for a bigger firm, the average net income is not the average net income for the firm, but the average net income for the project itself. Likewise, the book value is not the book value of the firm's assets, but the book value of the assets that are specifically used to operate the project. Right? So that's what's going into the average accounting return. We can think about this as a project level analog of the return on assets, return on uh, of, of the ROA. So we can take our net incomes here to solve for the average accounting return. We can say 13,620 plus 3,300 plus 29,100. And we're just taking the simple arithmetic average. And all that means is we add the numbers up and we divide by the number. So we divide by the three because there are three values. All of that will be divided by the average book value of the assets. And here in the problem, I've just given you the average book value of the assets. If we do our algebra correctly, we'll see that the average net income for the project is 15,340 year over year, divided by 72,000, which is the average value, book value of the assets. And we get an average accounting return, or AAR, of 0.2131, or 21.31%. Remember, this is a return and the average accounting return rule says we accept the project if it provides an average accounting return that is greater than our target rate. And here we've chosen our target rate to be 25%. So we accept the project when the AAR is greater than our cutoff or our target rate. And in this case, that means we're going to reject this project because 21.31% is less than our cutoff of 25. Now, this has one, so one of the same problems that the payback and discount and payback rule have, which is that this target rate is, for the most part, arbitrarily chosen. Now, it is not quite as bad as the discounted and, and normal payback rule because this does not have to be completely arbitrary. We can and often will see established firms set the target rate equal to the firm's total return on assets. The overall firm's total return on assets. Because as I said, this is a project level analog of return on assets. Remember that return on assets is just net income divided by total book value of assets. So we can use the firm's ROA as the cutoff rate for any project, meaning we want to try and bias our project decision making to only take projects that are better than the firm's current return. This will make our investors happy because we'll only be increasing the firm's return on assets. On the other hand, it does make the 
for a firm with a very high ROA, it can make it very difficult to accept a project. Notice that here, 21% return on assets for the project is pretty incredible. And again, I've made this cutoff rate high just to illustrate some of the problems that we can have, which is that we reject a, an, again, objectively good project. We know it's a good project because the MPV is greater than zero. We also can see that it's a good project because the evidence here suggests an, an average accounting return or, or a project level ROA of 21%, which is great. But we've rejected it because the firm itself is better. And that's kind of a weird thing to think about, that a firm might reject a project because it's not good enough. And that is one of the failings of the AAR. However, it still has its uses, and it has its uses particularly when accounting information is more reliable than the projections about operating cash flow. And that can be for any number of reasons.